This drawing is part of a series of portraits which the National Portrait Gallery commissioned of leading film directors. Before the sittings, the directors were invited by artist Nina May Fowler to choose a film of particular significance to them. So this film is then projected during the sitting and Nina recorded their reactions of the film on camera. So she did some loose sketches with their faces lit only by the light of the screen. She chose specific titles for the drawings based on the timing. So this drawing is called 290437. So it refers to the exact frame the director's watching so Ridley Scott chose to watch the scene from a film that was a major turning point for him and his relationship to cinema. So I think this adds an element of mystery and is a talking point. We all wonder which film Ridley Scott's watching and I believe that that is then still between the artist and Sir Ridley Scott. We've displayed Nina May Fowler's portrait within our exhibition 100 Years of Collecting, which stretches over two of our main galleries. The portrait's displayed in Gallery C, which holds most of the modern and contemporary works, but it's positioned opposite the apocalyptic works of artist John Martin, because we wanted it to really have a relationship and a, and a talking point and a dialogue between those works. John Martin's artworks are cinematic. He intended them to be viewed as an experience back in a time where there are no films and no cinema. And they're dramatic and they have a theatrical quality. So this really was an experience for people of that time to go and see these works. We know that John Martin's work influenced filmmaker and special effects artist Ray Harryhausen in films such as Jason and the Argonauts and Clash of the Titans. And then they will have influenced future filmmakers John Martin took inspiration for his work from his local landscape of Hayden Bridge, his hometown. And we know that Ridley Scott also has been influenced by the industrial landscapes of the Northeast and especially Teesside. So we want to draw connections between Sir Ridley Scott and John Martin's landscapes and the apocalyptic feel of those landscapes. As part of the learning programme, we were really excited to work with young people, encouraging them to come up with their own film scenes based on their local landscapes. We're in discussion with Tyneside Cinema, where um, Sir Ridley Scott had connections as his great uncle, Dixon Scott, was a filmmaker and he was responsible for setting up the Tyneside Cinema in Newcastle. And in 2003 interview, Ridley Scott had said that he had very fond memories of the North East. So we were delighted to be able to bring the portrait of him back to the northeast and to the Ling Art Gallery. Due to COVID-19, the Coming Home Sir Ridley Scott Learning Programme was launched in January and it's now moved online. So when many of us are spending time at home, we've launched a portrait challenge inspired by the theme of Coming Home. Using Nina May Fowler's portrait of Sir Ridley Scott as a starting point, we're inviting young people of secondary school age to submit a portrait that will be hosted as an online exhibition on the Ling's website in March 2021. We're particularly encouraging young people from the region, particularly places where Ridley Scott is affiliated with. So, for instance, his birthplace of South Shields, his town where he went to school in Stockton, and he also went to college in Hartlepool. What we're inviting young people to do is to respond to one of the three themes and produce an artwork in any medium or scale which will then be digitized and uploaded into a virtual exhibition space. More details can be found on the Ling's website about themes and how to join in.